Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about link performance tips. This is a video free out of who knows how many. So today we're going to be talking about a single keyword or operation, uh, whatever you want to call it, it's called where. And at the same time, we're going to be discussing interfaces and boxing. Obviously, accidental boxing is bad and additional boxing depends. Probably it's good. So um, in my previous video, we discussed um, why, you know, losing type information in link is bad and leads to performance degradation. And we discussed the where um, iterator. So um, this time around, we're going to look at the where operation in, you know, like close detail. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to try and implement a better version of this operator. So as it turns out, and I, as I told you, um, this will box. We don't have any concrete type information here. So we just know that we have I, I enumerable. Um, same here. So what's going to happen here is when we call the where on I enumerable, we're going to act, we're going to allocate stuff on the heap. And it will not box because it's a struct that's, uh, you know, going to be uh, basically promoted to a class in box. It's because uh, this guy, you know, the where operation creates a class anyway. So in that sense, it will not box. But what it will box is it will box your enumerator because if you have an enumerator and it, it's, you know, a struct, then it's going to box in a way that's struct. If it's a class, then it's just a class, right? So that's bad for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's bad for performance and other like uh, link operations like first or default, uh, like single and probably some others don't do that. They just take your enumerable, take your enumerator and just go, just like roll with it, right? So this is different because it creates a wrapper class around uh, our enumerator in a way. So why is that even done in such a way, right? So let's look at the where operation. So we have a bunch of null checks here. And uh, what we have here as well is if this is a list and we're going to be just talking about the list now, uh, we're going to create this class where list iterator. So let's see, uh, you know, how it's implemented. So like I said, it's an iterator that will capture our enumerator. So if it's a struct, then already it's gonna it's gonna be promoted to the heap. Uh, it will capture our predicate and our source, and it will use that to filter out anything that we want filtered because we passed the predicate. And you might still be wondering why it's sort of done this way. And we have to, in order to like understand that, we have to look at the iterator class. So when we go to the iterator class. We, we're gonna see that uh, this class has, you know, a thread ID, so it captures thread context in a way. So it's thread aware. It also has a dispose operation, which is sort of like, you know, implemented in a simple way. But all of these iterators that uh, use and inherit this from this class will um, implement their own sometimes much rather they're going to implement their own custom dispose. So this is used because uh, we can work with multi, you know, we can use this iterator using a multiple threads. So things like, you know, probably parallel link or stuff like that could, could use that. We can, you know, create our own bunch of threads or tasks and, you know, share that iterator as well. And if we have stuff that needs disposing, then we can dispose of these resources. And every time you have a scenario like that, then you just cannot use the stack because the stack is tied to a single thread. So um, there's no way to be able to use that. So I'm just, you know, my wild guess is that this is why it has been created like that, because we can share this class between threads and that's uh, you know in certain situations that's good okay so moving on let's move to a specific code example let's use the where operation so i have a function here that we're going to test in the loop 
um, I have a list of 15 elements and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna call where where x is greater than some like number and that number is 9 so we're gonna capture everything after 9 um, then we're gonna do a tool list and return the result obviously so let's see how the link version performs 90-ish 6 milliseconds so um, yeah again um, testing procedure is not benchmark.net because that requires a lot of time it's a simplified version but uh, what we're trying to do is x uh, amounts of time faster or slower analysis and sometimes orders of magnitude analysis so um, small performance differences doesn't don't really matter but uh, since you asked about that in the comments, I'm gonna add my results from benchmark.net at the end as well. All right, so this takes 90-ish milliseconds. All right, so what we can do here is we're, we're gonna test how much faster uh, a non-link version of this code would be. So we're just gonna have a list, we're gonna do a for loop, and we're just gonna return that list. Um, obviously, this is this is not the same thing because Link is lazy. You can do stuff with this iterator. Uh, you you can filter it out even more and more and more using you know different operations. This is not that, but let's see how it performs. So this takes forty six point five milliseconds, something like that. Um, all right. So uh, let's test another version version which is not lazy but I think it's interesting so the list has a method called find all and we can use that method to filter out items that we don't uh, you know that we don't want or much rather that that items that meet the criteria we're gonna be generated and like you know we're gonna return a second list so let's test the performance of this guy 66 milliseconds so that's pretty good uh, as well obviously faster than link uh, there is no surprise but we would like to use link because we like the laziness we like uh, a bunch of things associated with link we like the expressiveness we like that abstraction so let's try and uh, f you know try let's try to speed up the link version so um one thing that people do, and this is a mistake, obviously, uh, is that they implement some sort of like custom um, operation. Uh, they override the where, and what you're gonna find is that they're gonna do this. So they're gonna create a new list, filter out stuff uh, by predicate, and return the list. And then they're gonna do a to list. So it's um, this is obviously wrong, but it's just to show you that sometimes mistakes like that can happen. And that's obviously not good because uh, what we're doing is we're doing a looped version um, that kind of works like link but not really and we're doing to list list so that's not good um, I don't think there's a reason even to test the performance of this because obviously this is not what we want and not surprisingly this is the slowest version of them all so let's look at something more sensible uh, Again, we're going to implement our where operation, but this time around, we're going to create a custom enumerable and um, a bunch of, uh, you know, I got a bunch of comments that um, I don't do these tests uh, correctly because I skip on the null checks. Again, this is orders of magnitude analysis, but um, I think this is a valid point, so uh, I'm going to do null checks from, from now on. So if a link version has a null check, my version is going to have a null check. It might not be the same check or the same if statement, but it's going to be a check anyway. So we're going to create this this, class, this struct much rather. So this struct, <clears throat> um, what it is, it's a read-only struct that, ha that captures our predicate and our list. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have a custom signature of get enumerator, which we're going to inline. And uh, for completion, we're gonna have the interface versions as well of get enumerator. And we're gonna have obviously a struct called enumerator where we're gonna use our predicate when you move next to filter items out. So um, 
you know, we have a struct, so uh, it would be good to not box this truck by accident. And um, let's test the performance. So the performance of this guy is really, really slow. So uh, that's not what we wanted to end it up with, really. And the performance is slow because we're still going to box. And where we're going to box is... Uh, first of all, we're going to return the e enumerable, and um, that probably is going to box already. But then we're going to call a to list, and to list expects a an enumer a i enumerable as well. So still, we're going to box. And just to prove that we're going to box, let's you know fire up the debugger and see that we're going to box. Uh, let's compile, uh, let's move to the debugger, let's run our code sample, um, let's break, we don't need to break. And yeah, we have our custom enumerable here, so that's not what we wanted really, as you can see here. It's ours because it's our custom class. And we managed to capture everything in that class, so our predicate, our source, and our enumerator as well, unfortunately. So that's no good. And why is that happening? Well, like I said, uh, if you're going to use interfaces for arguments or for return types, um, there's a huge chance you're gonna box. Um, there's a chance that you're not gonna box because um, C sharp or smart.net has. Uh, something that uh, uh, you might probably know, it's called interface devirtualization. And in very simple cases, it can actually, you know, detect that you have a single implementation of the interface and it will say then, well, okay, so if just one class is implementing the interface, I'm gonna devirtualize it and treat it like a class or a struct. And then that would be good but not in this case. So in this case, we're in the box. So we have to do something to, you know, combat this problem. So what we can do here is we can use our enumerable, um, but return a concrete implementation. But like I said, that's not going to help because the to list expects I enumerable still. So what we have to do is we have to implement our custom to list, unfortunately. But when we do that, then we're going to create a new list here. We're going to do a for each loop, which will not box. And we're going to add a bunch of stuff to the interface. And the reason why it's not going to box, because we're not going to use the interface version here, because remember, uh, we have this signature and this signature will, we're going to be used. So that's good. All right. So to... Um, verify that it's true let's see how it actually performs and then maybe let's run a debugger so that's really really good that's 63 milliseconds it's probably faster than uh, the list find version and let's comment this out for performance reasons um, yeah so let's compile and let's run our debugger yet again and hopefully we're now gonna see a version that doesn't have anything associated in the heap, which is our custom enumerator or enumerable. No, nothing. Okay. So yeah, that's good. This is what we wanted. So let's detach. And yeah, as you can see, uh, hopefully you can see that this version is really, really fast. And since I promised, uh, you know, performance charts of benchmark.net, so this is the, the performance of benchmark.net. The test was real simple. We just have had a bunch of methods where we called a where a tool list and returned that list each and every time. So that's why we're not seeing milliseconds, but nanoseconds in the performance characteristics here. So the mean is, you know, in nanoseconds. Um, but as you can see here, uh, the link version was the slowest one, if we disregard this mistake here that we made. Uh, well, actually the custom enumerable is really slow as well. But the, this is the link version, this is the where loop, uh, 
obviously it's going to be the fastest one. Then we have the find all, which I think we should be faster, but for some reason in this, this test case, it was just a, you know, like a couple of uh, percent faster, actually what, 33% 33, 33 faster, which is pretty good, but still I'd expect better. And this is our custom link enumerable with custom to list and custom where operator. So this is really cool because it's faster than find all and it's really close to the where loop, uh, you know, case. So uh, hopefully you can see that uh, it's not all bad. We can implement faster methods than uh, just you know link provides we have to be very careful when, when doing that but it's a possibility like I said before there are frameworks to that do this exact thing uh, but um, you know it would be good to know how to do them yourselves because maybe you don't need a framework maybe you just need a small functionality so that's it for now um, if you like the video please leave a like subscribe if you like you know this video and some others and if you found some mistakes uh, something you know that I have missed um, please leave a comment I try to respond to every single comment currently um, because I'm, I'm not you know uh, there's not a lot of comments yet so I'm, I'm trying to respond to every single one and I'm gonna read every one so yeah Thank you for watching and, you know, see you in the next video. Bye.